Okay, I was hoping to upload some old videos I had on the high quality camera. This computer is just having a complete spaz attack at the moment. It'll go for a few seconds then lock up completely like the cursor doesn't even move. A couple of seconds later it'll free up and it'll be fine again. And it'll do that every 30 seconds. So it seems to have stopped now. I'm not doing anything. That's... yeah. That folder's crashed. Now it's locked. I think it's time to upgrade this one. It's an old desktop. The caps on the board have bulged a little bit more than the, what they were when I got it. It's done pretty well though. I only paid 50 bucks for the whole chassis, main board, RAM and CPU. And that was about two years ago. So... I'm going to pull the one that I found out of the scrapyard out of the back of the Ranger over and play with that tonight. I was hoping to get other things done, but I need my computer. I'll upload this via the workshop computer, which is half as fast as this one. This is a 2.4, the workshop's a 1.2. It's not a bad computer. DVD burner, everything. So this is a Celeron with 2 gig of RAM and 256 meg uh, GeForce. G4 6600 GT graphics card. It's done well. Well, we've got the trailer loaded up with coils and copper scrap for tomorrow. And it's time to look at all these computers. And look at this old 386, which I assume is still a 386. Uh, this not so old 64 bit Athlon tower might replace my bedroom computer if it works. Um, and whatever else I can find floating around. Probably these two up here. They're from Dramana Secondary College. They're 2.4 gigahertz Celerons. So, yeah, I'll look at them and try and come up with a good replacement from a bedroom computer because that's just having a heart attack at the moment. Not good. Alright, all's good with the computers tonight. Uh, I'm going to play with something new and something old. Starting with the new, I've got this 64-bit uh, Athlon, uh, it's a 3.2 gigahertz system. Uh, loading Windows, I replaced the hard drive because it was just shagged. Just wouldn't boot, wouldn't do anything. It's a SATA 80 gig Western Digital Caviar. Make for a nice equipment autopsy. Another spare 40 gig ATA 100 IDE drive. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. Considering it was dropped and thrown around in the scrap bin, I'm guessing they ditched it because the hard drive failed. It's definitely an old company computer, like office computer. Pulled a few bits out of these to get it going again. I can't upgrade the RAM. Nice graphics card off a friend. He gave this to me a couple of years ago and I never had a main board that had run it. It's a fanless. Gigabyte GV NX66 256DP2 256 meg uh, graphics card PCI Express obviously a new hard drive in there a brand new drive that came in with a load of e-waste from a computer tech who was moving interstate and moving across to WA so he gave me a whole pile of stuff that was about two years ago and I've only just gotten around to opening up that fresh new hard drive and chucking it in. There's a blister pack down there. Shows how much I bother upgrading computers, but that's the last of the new stuff he gave me. So that should be uh, ready to go tomorrow. I'm going to go and help Brad V8 Jagnut move an engine tomorrow as well, so won't be doing too much around here. Now onto something rather old. Uh, it's just an old Osborne brand 386 33 megahertz PC I picked up at the junkyard as a dedicated autopsy victim. Didn't really intend on doing anything considering about two litres of water poured out of it when I picked it up. Yeah, that's a floppy drive out of that thing over there. I don't even know why they'd put a floppy drive in something that new. Rubbish things. Um, from the back it's got two COM ports, normal serial port, joystick game port, no sound, VGA video, it's not a mono uh, output, and an old uh, SCSI tape drive type backup output. I'm guessing that's 
a part of that. An old, like an old 8mm tape drive by the looks of it. Irwin brand. Yeah, it looks like an 8mm or something similar. Maybe uh, similar to a uh, Sony or Traven tape drive. Five and a quarter floppy, three and a half floppy, and a three and a half inch format hard drive. I'm hoping it's got a big MFM drive hidden inside it somewhere. I love those old MFM drives. Turbo. Hmm. It's been dry for a while. It'd be interesting to put power to it. Alright, let's take this thing apart. I'm pretty sure I've got all the screws out. old towers. A solid metal plate. Not like today's flimsy crap. No, slide forward. Oh yeah. Probably twice as thick as what the old cases were. Oh yeah, we're old. Very old school. See Sonic power supply, 220 watts. Damn, that's an old main board. It's about as old as the first main board I ever got to play with as a kid. Can't believe how happy I was when I first got my old computer board to play with. You can tell I've, I've always been a geek. <laughs> Complete nerd when it comes to electronic stuff. Anything to do with technology. If I can't pull it apart, well, I'm not happy. <laughs> right, the CPU is an AMD, not an Intel. Most of them are Intel, but this is an old AMD 386DX slash DXL40. Yeah. I can't zoom with this camera because I can't see anything on the display anymore. But, yeah, it's 40 megahertz, but 33 on the panel would be normal. 40 would probably be overdrive. Pretty impressive. Uh, that's the SCSI type card. Yeah, it does. It goes up to that tape drive. <laughs> Old school connectors. I like that. North Bridge Chips Microtronics Incorporated. A BIOS in there. 63 BIOS version 1.1 AMD 1986 Almost as old as I am Almost That's impressively old That October 05 What's the date though? 85 maybe? Good old Five and a quarter inch floppy drive made by TAC Japan. Back in the good old days. Stepping motor head control. <laughs> All floppy drives use stepping motors though. Even three and a half inch like that modern one there would have a stepping motor in it. It's only uh, the old MFM hard drives use stepping motors. That's what makes them so cool. And they went over to voice coil. But that old hard drive in there, I'll have to pull it out and find out what it is. It's definitely a Maxter brand. Looks very old. It's got a giant power supply in it compared with today's little computers. It's huge. Now oh, I've got some power turned onto it. Let's see what happens. Interesting sounds. I'll have to find a monitor for it. Hmm. 
wonder if it's just coming up with a keyboard error or something silly like that. Now let's try again with a keyboard on it. A vintage keyboard. Hmm. Those lights aren't supposed to stay on like that. Ah, I wonder what's going on in here. Yeah, mainboard battery. Yeah, I remember now. These things like leaking. Oh, there's the problem. <laughs> that ice slot pin row. Probably about that far along. It's all green and crusty. I bet you it's eaten half the traces out of the board in that section. That's why we're not getting anywhere. Poor old thing. Bloody mainboard batteries. They always ruin it once they start leaking. Oh well. Time to tear it to bits. Oh, I'm taking a few screws out. Let's have a look at what's going on in here. The uh, LPT and game port. And power connectors. whole slot's green all the traces and shit around it's all been eaten out damn it standard interface card shit I can't even remember what you call these things yeah it's got all the com ports on it That's for the tape drive. NEC 1979, 1986, 1988. Might be a 90s computer. Graphics card. Speedstar VGA 4.23. Casing Labs Japan Music chipset That's old school <laughs> Very The Microtronics Computers Main Board Revision F1 09 Oh bugger I just scrubbed that out Something or other Microtronics Copyright 87 to 92 40 megahertz marked down there that's reasonably old shame about that battery though it's leaked and corroded all the pins on that socket all the pins around here around the dip switches all the traces she's fried just like that bug that went into the bug zapper burn The old uh, SIM modules, RAM, Singapore. Don't even know what stickers on them, I can tell what they are. Without that, you've got to boot the computer up and then read the, what the BIOS says. That's all out. Floppy disk, pretty shit. That's old school. That's got to be the smallest three and a half inch drive I've got. Capacity 120 megabytes. That's small. That's an old, old Maxter, is it? Uh, inspected by number five in March of 1992. Yep. It's nice and old. That will make for a good equipment autopsy. Assuming somebody doesn't already make me an offer to buy the damn thing. A lot of people out there like collecting old hard drives. 
I still have that old BASF MFM drive. The guy sort of freaked out about the shipping charges from the other side of the world. So understandably, it was a bit expensive to ship. That's a T-Act five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Dusty. BLDC three phase DC motor. Big stepping motor for the head. And that's a tape drive of some description. Thank you, motor. What kind of tank drive is that? Irwin... Something or other? Irwin A250 slash 2080 Made in Singapore Interesting Is it a tape or... A data card or something? Uh. Some kind of tape, there's a drive capstan there, and that brassy thing down there's a head. Weird tape. Somebody will know what that is. Probably worth a bit of money. Right there. Oh, that'll do this one. I'll probably pull that board out and set it aside. I'll keep the CPU and the old fashioned RAM just for keepsakes. Oh yeah, that's something. Let's pull this power supply apart. Yeah, this is what your average computer power supply should be like today. And it should put out a lot more power than they normally do. Built solid. Now let's just see what this hard drive sounds like on its own. I know someone's going to be nagging me to try fire it up. Very dangerous little switch. Hmm. Well, high pitch, high pitch sound from the voice coil. Cool old little drive. Model SXX PCVA is thirty-eight P one. Hmm. Very old. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I've seen some of these where it had massive components and heat sinks, but it's got tiny heat sinks and a lot of space inside. But then again, it's probably not a bad thing. It's probably why it's still working when it's almost as old as I am. I mean, today they're so cramped in such a tiny little case, they get so hot. Whereas this one's got tons of airflow. There's a primary side, like in input power filtration down the bottom and it comes up the top through the DC rectifier and into the uh, switch mode side. It's pretty cool. Very old school stuff. Still don't know what that tape drive is. I'll have to pull that to bits one day when I get a camera that can actually zoom in close. Do some real close ups on this stuff. Oh. Just uh, finishing up the installation on this one and that'll do. It's night anyway. Thanks for watching.